Hi, this is a Ridge Runner with a, a Pine Home Primitive Skills moment where I'm going to uh, unbox and do a basic tabletop review along with a not field test but my kind of a test of a basic bushcraft knife. All right, and this one here is the Condor Tool and Knife Nesmuk. A lot of people have done reviews on the on this knife already, but I wanted to give it its due. Now I haven't even opened it up yet, I haven't handled it, I haven't done anything with it yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it out, and I'm going to open it up, probably not on camera, just because it's a lot easier that way since I'm a one-man band here. And then, when I'm done, I will then compare and contrast quickly with two bushcraft knives that I have been using for years. Alright, well let's take a look at what we have here. Well, I've just opened it up, and this is the Condor Knife and Tool Nesmuk. Now, I'm going to give my impressions of this thing based on my experience with not only bushcraft and whatnot, but my avid reader. Uh, I'm an avid reader of Wa George Washington Sears, both his uh, canoeing book and his uh, his book on uh, on woodcraft and camping, which is titled Woodcraft and camping. The Nesmuk is what, what it was a, a basic um, a trade knife. Uh, it could have possible, possibly have been a modification of a longer Skinner cut down. Uh, the knife was if it was described as being quite thin in blade and uh, that leads me more towards a Skinner knife cut down, a uh, trade style Skinner knife, uh, uh, not necessarily a custom one. Um, although it did have a horn handle on it, so or uh, yeah, a, uh, an antler handle on it. This one here, made by Condor, is a nice knife. Uh, I, I'm enjoying it already. It's got some heft to it. I will say though that calling it thin and blade would definitely not be of the uh, you know be, be an accurate term um, my batteries are for, are low already I can't believe it um, I'm just gonna finish off by saying uh, it's a good sturdy knife it feels good solid in the hand I, I'm, I'm liking this thing um, handle that people on the other reviews say the handles not it's a little boxy it's not it's quite comfortable in the hand um, it, it just has an oiled finish to it which is actually kind of nice it gives it a good grip sheath is leather and it's a pouch style sheath so it's very secure I already put it in there once it's got a welt which means it's going to hold it's going to keep the, the knife from cutting through quite nicely comparing it to your basic Mora clipper Mora clipper is considerably thinner of course it's got a rubber handle and whatnot which that's kind of apples to oranges. Um, similar, uh, similar edge. It's almost like a Scandi grind on 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 the Nesmuk to the to the to the Mora. Um, although it does edge out a little, it does taper in a little more. I think I'll probably work on it to put a more a traditional Scandi grind on it. Um, this is a decent knife. Um, and now, without further ado, we're going to test it. Yes, it just came out of the box, and now it's going to get tested in the most destructive, damaging place you can use a knife, and that's in the kitchen. We're going to make a stir fry with this. I am back. Just uh, before we go on with uh, processing the meat with this knife, I wanted to show you how the sheath was. Now I sort of told you out there that it's got a welt on it, which makes it so that it, the the blades are not going to cut through the stitching. It's stitched all the way up and down the spine of the uh, of the sheath, and it's got two good solid rivets you know, uh, that hold it in. It also the strap is pretty nice, the the, the belt loop that is, and uh, it holds the knife in the sheath quite well. It's a little bit of a high ride, and that might be good for some and not good for others, but uh, it's and it's not light enough to use it as an as a um, as a neck knife, so. Uh, um, pretty much you're, you're either going to like the sheath or you're not going to like the sheath. I'm personally liking the sheath already. Um, 
maintaining it will you can use the same stuff to maintain this sheet as you do for the handle and again it's an oiled finish handle with uh, brass uh, rivets which is quite nice uh, if you want to finish it off by putting some 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 clear coat polyurethane lacquer on there you're more than welcome to um, I will say that I'm probably going to do some wood burning on it to make it mine but it is a it, it fits into the sheath and really locks in there quite nicely so I, I think that uh, as much as a knife is the how what the steel of the knife is important and all those other wonderful things um, the sheath is probably just as important as anything else now the last thing I want to talk about is the fact that this is a high carbon steel knife and that it is in fact one of those blades that needs to be maintained with a little bit of oil to keep it uh, to keep it safe now earlier on in the video I just I just uh, described the fact that this uh, I was suspicious of the fact that maybe Nesmuk uh, or George Washington Sears had hit his knife was actually a cut down version of a trade style Skinner and this is what I'm talking about right here and what I believe happened is that he cut that just like that so you get the hump and it comes down just like on here. So what you've got here is a reproduction of something that's still in production now. <laughs> but if you notice when he, when he talks about it, that the knife is thin in blade. That's one of the things he liked to discuss. Well, this is certainly thin in blade, flexible, and razor sharp. The only difference about with this one versus his is that his had the antler style grip to it. All right, let's get going with uh, cutting up some meat and some vegetables. Hi, I'm back, and uh, I'm just about ready to start cooking. Uh, I wanted to make a quick point. I was talking about the fact that I had a sneaking suspicion that Nesmuk had a, had cut down a Skinner knife, uh, a standard trade style Skinner knife, to make his knife, or to or whoever had made it for him did it. And this is what I'm talking about. This is my sure. This is an antique Sure Edge Skinner. I use it in the kitchen very often. It's one of my favorite knives. And uh, aside from the fact that it, it does not have a uh, antler crown handle, uh, this blade does look like it could have been. It could be cut down if I were to want to ruin a perfectly good knife and make it into a Nesmuk style blade. Now, looking at this one, um, it's a lot fatter than the, the one depicted in his in the book, too. Blade shape is basically the same, it's just a little bit fatter. I actually like this design a little better than if I were to cut this one down. So, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up here and we're going to start working. Please excuse me, I have, again, the, the, the Dollar General Special tripod. This is definitely a filming with no budget moment, just so you have the idea. If this thing does happen to tip over or take a list to port or starboard, I apologize. Alright, well, I'm going to move the uh, Sure Edge out of the way and uh, we're going to start by using the Nesmuk to process some uh, some chicken into a well, the way Nesmuk put it, reduce this chicken to its lowest common denominator. All right, and it seems to be cutting beautifully. This is the edge that came out of the box, mind you. The only thing I've done with this knife is to wash it off with a. So with some dish soap to ensure that whatever they put on it doesn't get into the food. And, uh, oh, here we go. Well, I'm back, and uh, I've already carved, carved up some of this meat with this knife. I'm telling you, this is nice. Now, I'm going to move this out of the way just so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, imagine this was a piece of game, some game, and you were trying to get the meat off of the bone. This knife cuts right through that. Look how nice and thin that cut this thing makes. It tells you, and this is the knife, this is the edge right out of the box. I've done nothing to this edge. 
and it cuts nice thin slices off of raw meat. You know how hard that is to do with a knife, especially a knife that's designed for outdoor use. I mean, I couldn't do this with a cold steel SRK if I tried, unless it was right out of the box with their shaving sharp edges. This is a heck of a knife, a, a heck of a good knife so far. Now let's see how it just goes through here. And you can see effortlessly. And mind you, this isn't a fresh edge. I've been cutting. I cut up all of that other meat with this as well. All right. Now, vegetables are going to be another story. Now, we'll cut up some carrots in a few minutes. Let's see how it does against these, uh, these mushrooms. Mushrooms can be a challenge sometimes. You want to cut them nice and thin so they cook nice. Yeah, and look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So, for fine work, if it can do this, it can cut a bow drill fireboard just as easy. Well, not just as easy, but you know, you get the idea. Look at that. Again, same factory edge. I've cut up carrots, meat, run it across this bamboo uh, cutting board a bunch, bunch of times, and it's still sharp enough to do this. People have complained in other videos about the heat treat on this knife. I don't see the problem. Hey, we're back. Uh, I'm going to cut some of these carrots with it and see how it does. And uh, Again, processing uh, food is one of the main things a camp knife does. I mean, it makes you make fuzz sticks and trap triggers and all those other wonderful things. But I mean, one of the things we do most is prepare food from butchering the the game, cutting up the vegetables and things like that to put in whatever we're going to cook. So, being able to test a knife that you're going to use in the woods, in the kitchen is a very important feature because that way it does two things. It gets you comfortable with the knife you're going to be using in the woods before you ever take it there. So it's not a new thing. If there's a rub mark or something that's on your hand that's going to bother you from using it a lot, you know you can work on the, the, the handle and get it to a point where you can use it. Uh, if there's some liabilities with the knife that may make you decide you don't want to use it at all. It's a good time to find out is in the kitchen and even if you were to hurt yourself, you're close enough to a hospital or to a band-aid or whatever. So, for this, this is a good knife for, the, for, for camp use. It's a really nice design, and it's held a really good edge. So, I'm going to go up here for a second here, and I'll talk to you a bit about it. Basically, I think the best thing you, I can say is that go out and try it yourself. These things go for $25 to $30. Uh, Condor seems to make a pretty good product. So, uh, with, uh, this is the Ridge Runner with the Condor Knife and Tool Nesmuck signing off.